they all point to the same experience, which is not ultimately negative. It just seems negative when you are in it. But it is part of a larger purpose. It's part of a, the awakening, not for everyone, it doesn't have to be, but often it is part of the awakening process. The dark night of the soul is a term from, goes back a long time. Maybe goes back to the Spanish mystic Saint John of the Cross. I'm not sure if it does, but it goes back a long time. It describes something, well the questioner seems to imply that he is, he or she is going through something like this at, at the moment. <coughs> the uh, dark night of the soul, which yes, I have also experienced. That's a term then used to describe a, what one could call a collapse of a perceived meaning in life. An eruption into your life of a deep sense of meaninglessness. And the the inner state, in some cases, is very close to depression. Maybe some dark night of the soul, often to do with what is conventionally called depression. But it is basically a sense of emptiness or meaninglessness. Nothing makes sense anymore. There's no purpose to anything. And sometimes it's triggered by some external event, some disasters perhaps on an external level, external rather than within. The death of someone close to you could trigger it, especially premature death, for example, if your child dies. Or you had built up your life and given it meaning, and the meaning that you had given your life, this is what my life is about, your activities, your achievements, where you're going, what is considered important, and the, so the meaning that you had given your life for some reason collapses. So, as I said, it can happen if something happens that you can't explain away anymore. Uh, some disaster which seems to invalidate the meaning that your life had before. And really what has, what has collapsed then is the whole conceptual framework for your life the meaning that your mind had given it. And so that results in a sense of darkness, a dark place. But people have gone into that 
you're in that dark place for a while and then you emerge out of that, there is the possibility that you emerge out of that, you can emerge out of that into a transformed state of consciousness where life has meaning again but it is no longer a conceptual meaning that you could necessarily explain. It is often from the dark night of the soul, not necessarily, but quite often it's from there that people awaken out of their conceptual sense of reality which has collapsed they awaken into something deeper which is no longer based on concepts in your mind. A deeper sense of purpose or connectedness with a greater life that is not dependent on explanations or anything conceptual any longer. It's a kind of rebirth. And the dark night of the soul is a kind of death that you die. What dies in the dark night of the soul is the egoic sense of self. And of course, yes, death is always painful. But nothing real has actually died there, only an illusory identity. Now, it is probably the case that some people who have gone through this transformation, they have been through the dark night of the soul and they discovered that out of that a new self emerged that was a non-conceptual self but a, a deeper being, the awakened consciousness. And they, they somehow looking back, they realized that they had to go through that not everybody does, of course, have to go through that, but some people do. And they've even, in some spiritual traditions, they, they try to recreate the experience of the dark night of the soul in order to bring about a spiritual awakening. And that was probably part of the so-called mystery schools of ancient Greece and Egypt, uh, which were designed, they even survived into Roman times, uh, mystery schools uh, and with rituals and so on. Not much, we don't know much about it because they were kept secret. Not much was written about it. And in one tradition, you spend a prolonged period of time in darkness, sometimes even in a coffin, coffin-like place in complete isolation and darkness. That is an attempt, I would say, on the part of someone who has gone through the natural dark night of the soul to recreate the experience of it in a kind of artificial, more artificial way of actually experience that, the, that utter darkness where things break down. <coughs> Whether, to what extent that works when it's uh, not a natural experience but a created experience for how many people that worked and actually did bring about an awakening and a collapse of the mind-made self, 
I don't know how it whether it truly worked for many people, but it must have worked to some extent because it's a, the tradition went on for a very long time. They are other in other forms of in mythological forms also they speak of similar things sometimes described as the the night journey in mythological tradition or also the descent to the underworld. They all point to the same experience which is not ultimately negative, it just seems negative when you are in it, but it is part of a larger purpose. It's part of a, the awakening, not for everyone, it doesn't have to be, but often it is part of the awakening process. The death of the old self, the birth of the true self, So once you know that, if it should come, or if you should even be in the middle of it now, you can just, the more you surrender, the more quickly you go through it. Surrender means don't judge it anymore. You accept whatever it is that's your experience at this moment. But, as I said, not everybody has to go through that. For many people, the awakening process starts and begins without that. Sometimes, even after the awakening process begins, it might still happen, you, and then finally you will break through. But that's fine. Allow life to do what it does. You don't need to seek that, and we don't need to recreate it in some artificial way, so don't just shut yourself in a dark room for days on end. Uh, it's unlikely to work. It's unnecessary. The first lesson in the Course in Miracles says, nothing I see in this room means anything. And you're supposed to look around the room and whatever you look at, happen to be looking at, you say, this th doesn't mean anything, that doesn't mean anything, this table doesn't mean anything, this hand doesn't mean anything. What's the purpose of a lesson like that? Well, that's a little bit like recreating the, what can happen during the dark night of the soul, which is the collapse of a mind-made meaning, conceptual meaning of life. Believing that you understand what's it all about. <laughs> So, with the Course in Miracles in Lesson 1, it's a voluntary relinquishment of the human mind-made meaning that is projected, and you go voluntarily into saying, I don't know what this means, this doesn't mean anything. You, you wipe the board clean. In the dark night of the soul, it collapses. And in some spiritual traditions, then, you can actually, you're encouraged to relinquish your conceptual reality. And so, you're then meant to arrive at a place of conceptual, one could say, meaninglessness, or one could say, a state of ignorance, where you don't, things 
lose their, the meaning that you had given them, which was all conditioned and cultural and so on. And you can then look upon the world without imposing a mind-made framework of meaning. Mm -hmm. 